Okay. Ow, 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 ow. Let's stop that center. I should not have pulled that off. I should have left it in there. Um. Hi, I'm Tangles. This is my garage, and this is my car. Okay, so this is a differential pressure gauge, and this will tell me if I'm, well not if, but how much pressure I'm bleeding past the piston. So there will be some pressure loss. Um, it's not a Formula 1 car running, you know, interference fit tolerances. So there will be some loss, it's all a case of how much. Uh, my limitation will be that crappy compressor. I don't know how much pressure it can actually put out. I was hoping to put something in the realms of 100 PSI into this and see what it spat out, but we'll see what we can get. Um, step one of this, let's get this out of the way so we don't damage it. To do the leak down, uh, your leak down test, we need to get number one at top dead center. So we need the piston at top dead center to do this test, creating the smallest possible chamber and also it ensures that the valves are closed, therefore no air should escape, despite the fact some will. Uh, so to do that I need the right size socket on there and a screwdriver to put down there. I've got down there. 27mm socket on my ratchet I've got my screwdriver in here and when I reach down here which required a, a black belt and judo to get that on but obviously it's possible we'll just turn the engine over manually and eventually that starts coming back up now when that stops stops coming back up it's a top dead center so Slowly. Okay. Ow, 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 ow. Let's stop that center. I should not have pulled that off. I should have left it in there. Um, it's easier if you have someone under the car wanting that and someone up here watching that, but uh, I don't have that, so just got to do it myself. The compressor's full of air, or as much as I can give it, uh, because the safety valve went off, and we're plugged in here. I've given it a test run to make sure everything worked, and it, I stopped at about 65 psi because that's all it had in it. Uh, it looked good, but let's check it out anyway, um, and see how this test goes. Now we just build our pressure slowly. Uh, yeah, that's all right. So this is reading the pressure in and this is reading the pressure out and over there it's pissing out air obviously and I got that noise before as well but it's just the air bleeding through this so far so good so I also did some googling said between 75 and 80 psi should be enough and at 70 psi I have equal pressure theory although it feels like air is escaping obviously that sound um, if it is oh we go it's starting to bleed out no I'm running out of air in the compressor so why is that bleeding out it's just not working oh the air's not coming out here to get number two. The tiniest amount of air is leaking, it can make strange noises. Okay, so leak down take two. Um, did a couple of tests. First thing I did was I fixed the air leak over there because it was a pain in the ass. Second thing I did was test this without it being in the cylinder. There's some sort of valve in this stem, I believe, and it's what makes the noise because it makes it without being in there. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that noise is that valve doing weird stuff with a very very small amount of air leaking past it starting to lose compressor pressure there there's a pain in the ass that noise but I'm pretty sure it's the valve in that stem I'm slowly losing pressure to be expected really let's lock that off at 
70 psi, just under 70 psi, see what happens. So after a couple of minutes, there was no appreciable loss, um, one or two percent, which is very healthy. So the other thing you should do is uh, open your radiator cap and have a look. If there's any air getting through a, you know, a leak into the coolant, coolant system, obviously there wasn't any air escaping, so it's not getting out. But if on number three there's a split head gasket and it's escaping into the coolant system, you'll be able to see it and hear it bubbling out of the radiator. So. Um, it's annoying that squeal is there because if any air is getting out I want to be able to hear it but uh, also you know I blocked these off during the test to make sure there's no air getting out of those and there wasn't air getting out of that either so there's no air getting out anywhere that she could get out as well as the gauges matched up. Gonna rinse and repeat two three four five six and I'll let you know the results. Cylinder number two, cylinder number three Cylinder number four. Cylinder number five. Cylinder number six. Okay, just to demonstrate what it does with no pressure, i.e. if there was no means to hold the pressure. Now, it gets up to 20 psi because that's how long it takes to open this valve that's in here. So that is changing the test results a little bit, but this is up to 40. 60, 80 psi, so at 80 psi we're only reading 50 psi in here, so take 50 psi to push that through, that test may be flawed actually, I'll have to have a think about that, I think it's probably pretty good, but it's not as good as I'd like it to be maybe, we'll do some googling. Oh. You can see in there, I think, maybe, hopefully, there's definitely a valve down in there. We just pulled the end off it, so. And it is sort of holding pressure against the valve alone, seem seemingly. So, um, I had to do some more Googling and make sure that that test is relevant. If it's not, I have to do it again with another fitting. So, where I left off, I did the test of this. This has a valve in it. Therefore, test is redundant. No good.